All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we've got a relatively small crowd today. Um, all familiar, <clears throat> all familiar faces. So, hello, everyone. Um, the town hall is being recorded. So, um, for folks watching the recording or listening to the recording, um, welcome. Uh, Today, um, we are going to be chatting about the a and vote on the future of a and and Aragon Court. Um, we have uh, both of the authors of the proposals that are up for a vote uh, here on the call today. Uh, myself, John Light, I work on community governance at the Aragon Association. Um, but uh, the proposal that I authored, um, putting forth in my own name, uh, it's not intended to reflect the official views of the association. The association is um, staying neutral with regards to the proposals and is just uh, happy to implement whatever the community decides. Um, and the proposal that I put forward was uh, in the interest of that neutrality. And then we have uh, Jose from Delphi Digital, who put forward several different variations on the proposal to merge A and J with A and T, um, which we are very thankful for. Um, the A and J poll on these proposals just ended about an hour ago. And so before uh, jumping into the discussion about the proposals if if any a and t holders on the call have <clears throat> questions or any other community members of course um i thought we could first review the results of the a and j poll and just uh take a quick temperature check and see how everyone is feeling about the results of the a and j poll because um, i think the a these results will be useful in informing um, the how A and T holders ultimately vote on these proposals. So I wrote up a quick summary, just published it in the forum about 20 or 30 minutes ago. I'm just going to go ahead and look, look through that and uh, read off the poll results. And uh, I'll give you all my take on this. Um, and then uh, open the floor up for community discussion. Let me just pull up the forum post right now. All right, so um, the proposal to that I put forward about voiding the results of the last vote to deploy Aragon protocol and keep A and J and Aragon court as is, um, A and J holders were roughly split on. Um, we got eight point seven million no votes and. 7 million yes votes with no winning by an 11 point margin. For Jose's uh, proposals to merge A and T and A and J, the top two offers um, in terms of the conversion rate, um, were the only ones that received majority yes approval. Uh, so 0 0.046 A and T per A and J and 0 0.044 A and T per A and J. Both of those proposals received majority support and then the rest were voted down. Um, the next highest amount of support 
was garnered by the third highest uh, offer, which was 0.0396 ANT per ANJ. And it only got 13% support. And the rest uh, were pretty much all, all uh, flatly rejected. So this indicates that you know, ANJ holders are converging on the, the top two offers as, as you know, what they would be willing to accept from ANT holders to, to stay. Um, keeping in mind that these offers are conditional upon ANJ holders um, after taking the offer and, and converting their ANJ to ANT, they would be locking their ANT and activating it in the new Aragon protocol for a period of one year. Now, if one of these merger proposals is approved in the ANT vote, then there will be a follow-up vote next week to decide what price will be offered to A and J holders who do not lock and activate the A and T that they receive from the merger. Um, so the the prices indicated in in the proposals that A and J holders just voted on and A and T holders are voting on now are the conversion prices if A and J holders do lock their tokens and then the rate or conversion rate that A and J holders will receive if they do not lock their tokens will be decided at a later date if one of these merger proposals um, wins in the A and T vote. Um, also noteworthy, uh, which Jose pointed out in, in, a, in a tweet this morning, is the turnout uh, in this A&J poll was the highest turnout that we have seen in any Aragon network-related vote. Um, the top proposal received 18.4% uh, A&J supply turnout. Um, compared to I think the highest that we ever received, the highest turnout we ever got in the in the AGP process was a, was around 10% of the A and T supply turning out to vote. So that's a I th I think just noteworthy in itself it shows that there are certainly a lot of A and J holders who are interested uh, in um in what's going on here. And um It'll be interesting to see how this turnout uh, compares to the the turnout for the A and T vote that's going on right now. Um, with that, uh, those are those are my you know quick observations, uh, just looking at the the results of the poll. Um, but if anyone else has any thoughts about uh, the poll results or if uh, we want to jump to questions, any questions about the proposals or the governance process, uh, I'll go ahead and open up to the community to ask any questions or provide any commentary if you if you want to share. You can just uh, either unmute yourself or type in the Eagle's Nest text channel, which is located right above the voice channel here in the voice category in the Discord menu. Jose, I have a question for you. Um, if you uh, are available to answer. Yeah, for sure. I know um, I think it was either yesterday or the day before Delphi came out and publicly endorsed the third highest uh, offer, 0.0396, uh, as um, kind of Delphi's preferred offer, given the results of the the A and J poll, um, would Delphi still be happy with 
that offer if that's what a and holders decided to go with or have your preferences shifted at all as a result of the a and j poll um no well so i think what we tried to do is kind of um have an honest discussion and and, and thought amongst ourselves of what would be the the number that we would actually be comfortable converting at the minimum number and that that was the number that we arrived at now i the only thing that changes from the a and j poll is if sort of other um important community members and and a and j stakeholders wouldn't be willing to convert at that price because ultimately i think the most important like data point here is really how much of the a and j community is 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 happy with the conversion price and is willing to to stick around and lock their tokens for a year and kind of be committed community members for for that amount of time and i think Ryan, who's who's on the call, um, is is obviously a pretty key community member, and, and he's expressed um, his preference for this for the second highest option. So I don't know if if you want to say something about that, Ryan. But I think the only thing we we just want the, what's best for the for the community. Um, so yeah, from from our perspective, our, our number doesn't change, but the only thing that changes is depending on what other ANJ holders um, want. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh... What Delphi did certainly shows uh, how reasonable they've been through this entire proposal process. Um, and generally, if you look at the nature of the poll, the the community's pretty strongly signaled around the four four number um, as being being reasonable. Again, it's it, it ends up not being up to A and J holders, but um, even though. Delphi signaled a, a potential floor at 396. Uh, um, it sort of is pretty obvious where the, the community sits around a 0.044. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so it's just an interesting poll to to look at what the, the end result was there. And uh, um, exciting overall, I think, I think generally. Uh, I'm excited to see what anti holders have to say about it uh, over the course of this week. Yeah, thank you guys um, both for your for your input. <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, one and and I would also just like to add that I am super excited about where Aragon Court goes from here as part as Aragon Protocol and the ability to continue to have this um this arbitration mechanism as a tool because i think it's a tool that unlocks a lot of new things um and for example we are specifically building uh a a, a network that that allows for physical assets physical real world assets to sort of have on-chain representation which opens up a whole bunch of different things but as a decentralized group um, and Aragon, Aragon Court as an arbitration mechanism ends up being super um, useful for that to be able to import some subjective real world data on onto chain, um, so to speak. And uh, yeah, so I'm just pretty excited about where Aragon Court is going uh, as Aragon Protocol. I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I would I would second that. Um, we're, we're we're super. I mean, we, we, in a way, we can't wait to kind of put this behind us and really be able to focus on on making Aragon Protocol a success. Uh, we've been doing a lot of research into the governance space. I think we'll be we'll be sharing some of that with the community over the next sort of month or so. And then, um, if all goes well, we'll also be working on the on the token economics for for the new Aragon Protocol, the fee model. And I think there's clear product market fit for sort of optimistic snapshot. That's kind of what we pointed out in our report as well. And so, you know, guardians are a key part of that and, and a key stakeholder that needs to be incentivized. And then I think there's a bunch of different use cases that sort of the new, you know, court slash protocol slash kind of subjective oracle that that, that ANT has has kind of become um, that, that we can explore as well. So yeah, we're, we're really excited about the, the future of the of the court and being involved there. Yeah, good comments, guys. Thank you. Um, agreed. <laughs> On all fronts, of course, I'm slightly uh, biased, but um, yeah, I 
I put my proposal forward, um, even though, you know, in the interest of neutrality, like it was, it, it was a, it was an honest proposal from my perspective. Um, I don't have a strong opinion which way it goes either way. I'm excited about having the, the, the court live, whether it's the, the legacy court or the, the protocol. Um, I think that this is a powerful primitive and a, and a huge value add for the ecosystem. So I'm also very excited just, uh, to see what, what people do with it. And, uh, in particular excited to see, uh, Ryan's project get put into action. It's the first time I've heard of it, but it sounds like a, a cool use case for the court. Um, does anyone else on the call have any thoughts they want to share about, um, either the results of the A and J poll or, um, questions, thoughts about the proposals themselves. I just think uh, one thing to, to keep in mind uh, for sort of anti holders is that the, the, the conversion price that we're setting for people who, who convert and, and lock up their tokens for 12 months is like those people are ANT holders, right? They'll, they'll have to live with the, with the consequences of, of this decision, you know, even more so than kind of ANT holders voting because they'll actually be, be locked up for a year. And so uh, that's, a, in, in our opinion, a really valuable thing to pay for. And I think there's, there's a lot of examples of crypto communities um, that, that have I implemented things like that, right? Synthetics probably being the most prominent example in terms of locking up rewards and, and the positive effects that can have. Uh, in terms of fostering an ecosystem. And I think the voter turnout today, you know, being the highest ever, as, as, as John mentioned, is, is, is sort of testament to the strength and, and engagement of the, of the ANJ community. And I think, um, you know, absorbing that community into, into ANT, lock, locking them up for a year, such that they're incentivized to stay a part of ANT is, is, a, is a great, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a worthy goal to achieve. And I think like worth, worth paying for kind of thing. Yeah, I, I have, I have to definitely give you credit, Jose, for, for putting that, um, specific, uh, variation of the merger proposal together. Um, I think the first Aragon one proposal that went up at the beginning of October did not have a, uh, any sort of like locking component or long-term incentive alignment behind, uh, besides just, just doing the, the clean swap A and J for A and T. Um, so I, I thought that mechanism was, a was a valuable, uh, addition to the discussion. So, um, thank you for that. No worries. Appreciate it. And I just want to reiterate that, um, yeah, at some point during the process, um, A and J holders felt like, especially us and the team, we didn't care about, uh, uh, you guys. And uh, for us, it hasn't, it hasn't been easy. Um, we could have done better, for sure. Uh, but in, in, we always uh, consider you guys and, and like we, you have shown again that uh, this is an amazing community and like I personally would love for this to, to end in the, in, in the best way. That, that means that, that you will stay with us and, uh, and you will stay like being part of this community. That was Maria from Aragon One. Uh, thank you, Maria. Um, plus one <laughs> to, to that. Um, definitely wanna keep ANJ holders part of the community. Um, the results of the precedence campaigns that we have run so far, um, have been promising. Um, I, I think A and J holders haven't, uh, haven't shot themselves in the foot yet, um, on any of the court decisions as part of the precedence campaign. So, you know, A and J holders have been flexing their muscles and, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm excited to, to see the court go live and 
reach its ultimate potential, I think that there's there's a there's a great opportunity here. Um, so let's wh whatever the results, I I hope we uh, keep the the community together. Yeah, hundred percent. Truthfully, I feel like um, you know we're all part of the same community. Right, like a, uh, A and T holders are A and J holders, and 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 so um, it, sometimes I get really wrapped up in in my own stuff, and I'm very time poor these days, and so I don't get enough time to spend on these calls with you guys. But I would like to, um, and certainly want to sort of organizing to to be uh, more active going forward, especially as we think about like projects that are um, very you know, that, that use the core in a very central fashion that, um, that are core for us. Um, but I hope generally this hasn't been too, um, too contentious, uh, within the core community that are around each other every day. Um, cause obviously like I never in my, in one moment had a doubt that we would resolve it, uh, very elegantly and amicably, uh, uh because that's, you know, really how this this community's operated the entire time. Um, so it's cool. And it's also amazing to watch the, the evolution of like how now we can find shelling points, um, with different mechanisms. And, um, and I think it's just a really like healthy progress of this amazing project and community, which is Aragon at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, Hey Dave, welcome. Um, I saw um, Maria posted in the uh, Eagles Nest text chat. Um, Ryan, if if you have a, a moment and you you can uh, or, or are are willing to, uh, would you be willing to share more about uh, your use case uh, sure. for the court? Sure. So I will. Um, uh, I'll, I'll sort of just explain where this came from. Uh, so originally, um, I've become a bit of a gold bug in the last few years, buying up kind of like just little bits of like physical gold. And it's kind of an interesting space that kind of reminds me a little bit of the tenants of, of Bitcoin, but there's some distinct differences in the communities. And it would be, and I, I read this report, this gold report where it talked about all of the projects uh, that were gold crypto projects and it, the gold community had re totally rejected all of them because they're basically all just centralized proxies, right? Like, you, you know, Digix, for example, which is the same as Paxos and the rest of them just hold all the gold themselves in one vault because like it's a relatively trivial amount of gold. I think Digix had a few million dollars of the gold and, and Paxos had like 500 K or something. So anyways, you could very easily do a, a decentralized network of this where people uh, can act as their proxies. They get a, an audit report that demonstrates that they're custodying a, a specific amount of gold. You, it would, it, an audit report from like a KPMG probably be like a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks. So it's not something that where you would custody like say 10 grand of gold. You'd probably do like a hundred grand or, or, or maybe uh, a little bit more, but the same type of investment that you make in, you know, running a hedging node or something like that. And, um, and then people could actually have a decentralized network of minting, um, these gold tokens that are actually physically backed. And then, but then the question is always, okay, well, what, you know, how do you prove that somebody is continuing to custody the gold and they're receiving a demerge fee on the network the same way that like this, think of it like the stability fee for maker, right? So it's a, just demerge that the, gold proxies have and then that actually allows leverage but that's a whole different thing that we can we can discuss um uh and then but then you have to have some arbitration mechanisms so that somebody can come and challenge and say no you absconded with your proxy and gold prove that you have it and then you produce another uh auto report the court uh the court judges whether that that you know that proves that you have the gold that you say that you have and then you you would then not get slashed because this would need to be a collateralized system where you have a certain amount of collateral on chain that you're that you're posting against 
the things that you're holding off chain and you get remunerated on that, like a stability fee. So it, again, think of it somewhat similar to like staking um, or farming, but just with like physical assets that have specific characteristics. And so um, Dean and I actually made this white paper, I think like last year ago at this time. And we just haven't done anything with it because we've been wrapped up in other things, but now sort of coming back around to it and noticing, you know, noticing there be a whole host of other use cases that go beyond just the gold, the proxied gold use case that like people could do this for Pokemon cards or, or like physical representations of art that then get represented as an NFT, but you still need that, that like, mechanism for whoever pro whoever is the the custody of the physical world part can prove periodically when they're called upon um uh to it, just the same way that you do like proof of replication in filecoin right uh and they just produce it through a th like a red you know a whitelisted third party report um and then it's judged on the court by the court and so the court acts as this almost this this um uh, I, can't, I I think it's called pin top pin topiker or something like that where if if you look at like old jails usually there's an opticon yes that's it perfect so anyways um it acts like that and um and I think it's a really interesting use case that can then scale right because then Aragon court receives fees or or is in charge of uh, effectively slashing these participants in this decentralized proxy of whatever physical assets we uh, we called it fats just for kicks um physical asset tokens but uh um yeah so now uh we're actually doing some hiring right now uh and bringing in people to build this in so that's it yeah, plug plug for anyone uh looking for a job in crypto or a new job. <laughs> um, thanks for sharing more about that, Ryan. That sounds really interesting. Um, Open a feedback, by the way, and, and new ideas and things like that. Uh, I'll, po I'll post the, the white paper um, from like from last year. Uh, I'll, I'll post, I'll, uh, it's on like a hack MD. I'll, I'll get it like a, uh, a document posted in here. Nice. We'll look out for that for sure. Oh, shit. Oh, I got to run. I, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Totally understand. Uh, thanks for dropping in, Ryan. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah, there have been a bunch of digital gold kind of projects um, in the crypto space. It'll be interesting to see if Aragon Court can make a difference uh, for that use case. Um, getting back to the topic of the uh, proposals that are currently up for a vote by a and holders. Um, we have about 24 minutes left scheduled for this call. Um, if anyone has any questions or feedback, concerns, thoughts about the A and J poll, uh, the proposals themselves, the governance process, um, feel free to chime in here. You can just unmute yourself or type in the Eagle's Nest text channel which you can find right above the the voice channel here and if no one else has any uh, thoughts to share we can wrap things up early and uh, we'll have the recording available to listen in later if you joined late or couldn't make it listening to this afterwards Thank you.
don't don't have any any questions, but I'll, I'll stick around to to um, answer any any questions that I that I can on on the proposals. But one thing I wanted to mention is obviously there's been a lot of um, kind of tension among the communities and stuff throughout this process. Um, and I think one thing to remember is that this is kind of like a first within a first. You know, like decentralized governance is already new, and this kind of like what's effectively like an M and A transaction. It's it's kind of one of the first of its kind in crypto, and which is which I think is really cool. But it's normal for for there to be like missteps and and people disagreeing on what the best thing to do is. So yeah, I, I just think it's been a really interesting process, sort of following this and and you know being involved in it and um there'll be a lot of learnings here and kind of precedent setting, not just for Aragon, but, but for the space. So yeah, really, really cool to be, to be involved in it. Yeah. Thanks for that, Jose. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good perspective to keep in mind. Um, not to beat ourselves up too much. Uh, <laughs> if, uh, if we feel like any mistakes have been made because yeah, this is, new not just for everyone here but for the space in general um i haven't seen anything like this happen before um perhaps it has but uh yeah i think i think there's uh as you say a lot of firsts <laughs> happening here so it's there's bound to be some uh some missteps but i think that we uh you know with with these proposals um, with this process that we've uh, that we've been going through, I think that we we've course corrected and we're on a we're on a good path. Um, it's good to see what A and J holders think of the proposals, um, including having the option of keeping the status quo um, next to the proposals to merge and. Um, We'll see what we'll see what A and T holders ultimately think. If there are no further questions, I think we can wrap this up early course um if anyone thinks of anything after the call ends we'll be online uh, over the next couple of days uh, while the a t vote is ongoing um feel free to drop a message in the governance channel uh, here on discord or uh, uh, comment or or start a new thread on the uh, aragon forum let your voice be heard uh, if you have any thoughts and um, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to amplify that. Um, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and, and wrap things up. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined today. Uh, thank you, Jose, for, for your input. Um, Ryan, if you listen to this afterwards, thanks, thanks for sharing about your project. Um, thank you for your comments, Maria. And um, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Bye-bye.